Hello and welcome to this edition of Money, Money, Money. I'm Sumera Abdi. Today we're discussing an important topic, uh, net worth versus cash flow, which is more important for you. So let me first ask you, how many times have you caught yourself checking your net worth? Or even talking about your net worth, you know, discussing it with your friends or family. But how many of us have checked how good our cash flow is? Will money be available to us when we need it? So today, let's address exactly this. What is net worth? What is cash flow? And which is more important for you as an investor? Joining in to talk about it is Kirtan Shah, founder and CEO of Credence Wealth Management. Hi, Kirtan. Thanks very much for joining in. So my first question to you is exactly this. What is net worth? What is cash flow? And, you know, what is the difference? Sumaira, thank you so much for having me on the show. Sumaira, when we say net worth, we are typically talking about uh, what is going to be left with you after you've paid all of your debts, right? So theoretically, if I have to put this, I would say net worth is nothing but your assets minus liability. Now, what do I mean when I say assets here? Assets can be any and everything from all your real estate investments, the cash that you have in the bank, the fixed deposits that you've done, all your equity investments, everything put together will form the asset side of our discussion. And liability can be all the loans that you typically have from, let's say, a personal loan to a housing loan. So today, if I have to calculate my net worth, I would say that if all my investments put together that I just highlighted is 100 rupees, and all my liabilities that I have to pay together is, let's say, 40 rupees, then from the assets, if I pay off the liability, which is 40 rupees, the remaining 60 is largely my net worth, right? Now, uh, there are a lot of problems, or I would say uh, uh, theory may be very different from a practical standpoint of how you may look at net worth. Let me highlight a couple of things as to why do I make that statement. So while you look at net worth, there are a couple of questions that you might want to ask yourself. First is, uh, do the primary house that I stay in uh, should be included in the net worth? Now, you might say yes, because it is an asset. But then the other way of looking at it is, would you be able to sell it whenever you require? Or would you rather uh, liquidate it to pay off a debt somewhere? Uh, or probably, let's say, if you run a private limited company, and you've been able to build an equity in that company over a period of time. How do you value that in calculating your net worth? Or probably as simple as that, uh, you know, while you're trying to calculate net worth, would you consider all your investments on a pre-tax or a post-tax basis, right? So net worth is slightly subjective, uh, may not be very liquid. So you might, you might look at your net worth and say, my net worth is 60 rupees for, for the example that I gave you. But that 60 might not be immediately available to you as and when you want. And uh, like we discussed, there are a lot of ifs and buts as to how do you arrive at that 60. What is that cash flow is very plain, simple, straightforward, where you are saying that every month, every quarter, or every year, I will receive an X amount of cash flow from all the investments that I've done. Right Now, uh, various investors would want to kind of emphasize on various... Uh, uh, various methodology. I mean, there may be some investors who would want to focus slightly more on building their net worth, and then there might be investors who would want to focus or look at cash flows. But I think that is largely individual, individualistic. But uh, in my opinion, net worth is slightly more subjective. Cash flow is is apparent. You know the kind of money that you will receive in terms of cash flow uh, for a specified period of time. Okay, understood. Uh, but Kirtan, who are the kind of investors who need to give more importance to cash flow over net worth? So, uh, while we talk about uh, cash flow, Sumera, I think these are largely investors uh, uh, who are slightly more conservative in nature, who are probably uh, uh, planning for financial freedom very quickly, or probably are very close to retirement or looking at retirement, or plain simple investor who might not be looking at financial freedom or wanting to get retired uh, quickly, but uh, just don't want to take a lot of risk. I think these are the kind of uh, investors who largely want to focus on uh, creating a fixed income or a fixed cash flow for themselves. Whereas if you look at somebody who's more, more uh, aggressive, right, uh, who has a very steady cash flow income uh, uh, coming in every month, uh, does not want to retire uh, pretty soon, is very confident that 
you know, if the investment does not pay the cash flow, there is an actual income which is coming in periodically, which will take care of the cash flow. Uh, they are slightly more aggressive. They are slightly more looking at creating wealth over a period of time. Are the kind of investors who largely look at uh, net worth. Okay. So, naturally, the uh, kind of investing you do would also differ on this, right? So, what kind of investing is suitable for which kind of individual? So, Sumera, look, largely, if we talk about four assets here, right? We talk about equities, we talk about fixed income, we talk about gold, and we talk about, let's say, real estate. Now, if we understand characteristics of each of these assets that we are talking about, we probably might be able to figure out uh, pretty easily of who would want to go uh, or rather a net worth based individual would want to go for what kind of assets and cash flow would want to go for what kind of assets. So if you look at, let's say, fixed income, right? Or let's say, look at real estate. Fixed income and real estate largely, in my opinion, is uh, something that probably uh, a cash flow kind of investor would want to go for is because you would you would typically be able to lease out your uh, uh, resident uh, real estate property to generate uh, rents fixed income typically pays you a cash flow uh, periodically right but while you talk about equity you uh, you might have to then further boil down and try and figure out what style of equity investing are you talking about uh, what i mean by this is uh, let's say typically somebody who's a cash flow based uh, investor would largely look at doing value investing style of investing in equity. Uh, so if I have to broadly break this down somewhere, I think while you talk about cash flow kind of investors, you would typically see that they focus more on real estate, they focus more on fixed income. Uh, they would want to do a little bit of equity, but that equity style of investing is largely going to be value investing. Whereas somebody who's largely more into wealth creation, net worth uh, building kind of uh, uh, investor. That investor would not want to do a lot of real estate is because you would know that uh, the rental yield uh, may not really appeal because it is too small for an aggressive investor. Or probably fixed income may not be a larger part of the portfolio. You will see uh, lower exposure to gold as well in, in this kind of uh, investor. And largely, this investing will happen in equity uh, more so on the growth or momentum style of investing on the equity side, Samara. Okay, can you explain that difference as well between uh, value and growth? Sure. Uh, so, Samara, largely while you do uh, equity investing, we are uh, talking about three styles, right? Uh, first is, you say, value investing. Value investing is the most uh, traditional way of investing in equity where you are saying that you will try and invest in sectors or stocks which are uh, fairly valued or which are undervalued. Uh, uh, they are not expensive versus their historical price to earnings ratios or the price to book ratios. So let's say today if I talk uh, today if I talk about just as an example may not fit in what we are trying to say but let's say IT. Now IT has fallen 30 percent from the top right some investors might find value in investing in it at this point in time versus some other sector which have not fallen 30 percent from the top right so value investing is largely trying to buy those sectors or those stocks which probably if you uh, if you compare with the other sectors or the historical data points you might feel that they are slightly more uh, cheaply available in terms of uh, valuation context but if you talk about growth investing, growth investing is a style of investing in where you would want to invest in sectors or you want to invest in stocks, which might look expensive at this point in time, which means they might have a higher PE, higher PB, or a higher EV by EBITDA. But uh, these uh, companies, you are pretty confident that they'll be able to continue the uh, staggering growth that they've shown on profits or sales over a period of time. So what typically happens is while you are ex expecting that these companies will continue to grow at a very faster pace, you are willing to pay a slightly higher valuation at this point in time because you know that when the sales uh, and other uh, areas around the business will grow at a faster pace, the same valuation will look slightly cheaper in the future. So growth investing is largely buying stocks which may look expensive right now, but because you are expecting them to grow at a very faster pace, you are okay to pay that.
value investing is versus traditional and historical valuation data points, you probably find this stock or sector slightly uh, uh, cheaply available at this price. And momentum, which we've not spoken about, Sumera, but momentum largely is a style of investing where you want to invest in stocks which are moving higher. So if the stock is generating uh, positive returns or is moving higher, you would want to invest in those stocks and you would want to sell stocks which are falling. So these are largely the three types of uh, styles of investing uh, in equity. So momentum and growth is more net worth or aggressive uh, investor uh, type of investing. Whereas value is more cash flow kind of investing. Okay, got it. Keith, then we're going to take a very quick break over here. But we have more questions to ask on the other side. So do stay tuned in. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Money, Money, Money. With us is Keith and Shah of Credence Wealth Advisors. And today we've been talking about uh, the difference between net worth and cash flow and which is more important to you as an investor. So we've discussed the differences and, uh, you know, basically which kind of investor needs to focus on what kind of an investing strategy. But Keith, and one question that I had was, you know, why would a cash flow focused portfolio need equity at all? So, Sumaira, we largely said that, you know, somebody who wants uh, uh, cash flow are, are individuals who probably are looking at looking at financial freedom or are probably looking at uh, a cash flow because they are very close to retirement, so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, uh, the core principle of investing while you are trying to invest uh, is to try and generate uh, inflation-beating returns, right? Because if you are not able to beat inflation at the end of the day, probably the kind of investing that you are doing theoretically may grow on paper, but you are largely, uh, you know, kind of going down on the value of the money that uh, you've been able to accumulate over a period of time. So largely, in my opinion, even somebody who is largely looking at a cash flow style of investing, right, is a lot risk averse, would also want to allocate, let's say, 20-25% of the portfolio to, to, to equities. Uh, first is because you want to create a portfolio which probably ends up beating inflation and adding a 20-25% uh, to the portfolio will definitely solve, solve that problem. Second, uh, like we also spoke that as a cash flow focused investor, you know, you would largely want to do value style of investing, right? Now, value style of investing takes care of two other things that are very relevant to a cash flow, cash flow uh, generating uh, investor. First is that when you do value style of investing, value style of investing is considered slightly more uh, or rather slightly less risk averse versus growth style of investing. So if you look at the volatility or standard deviation of a value-based uh, portfolio, you would see that the volatility is much lower than somebody who does growth uh, style of investing. Now that exactly fits in what probably a cash flow focused uh, individual or an investor is looking at. That is, I want to invest in equity to beat uh, inflation, but I don't want a lot of volatility. Mm -hmm. So when you do value investing of that 20-25% of your portfolio, that probably takes care of uh, less volatility. And also at that same time, while I talk about value investing, largely a lot of these value or contra investing happens in companies which pay very high dividends. right? So while you are trying to do a 20-25% allocation to equity, this also takes care of your cash flow requirements, Sumaira, which originally is the reason why you are building this portfolio. So you might do 20-25% in equity, but uh, that will have low volatility because it is value style. It might also pay you dividend, which will take care of your cash flow. And hence, at the end of the day, you try and tried building a portfolio which is not very volatile, is uh, aiming towards building uh, a portfolio which is uh, generating uh, inflation beating returns and also thanks to dividends that probably these uh, uh, stocks might end up paying your cash flow requirement is also taken care of and which is why largely i feel that even if you are more cash flow focused as an individual you probably still might want to add this 20 percent uh, to value style of equity investing somewhere okay fair enough but how can such a uh, investor take their first steps towards financial independence so, Sumer, I think it's very easy. Uh, uh, the reason why I quote this is because uh, first you will have to figure out what your what your uh, exact 
cash flow requirement is now what are, what do i really mean by that is let's say for example if you are looking at uh, uh, attaining uh, financial freedom or retiring let's say 5 years from today the first thing in my opinion you would have to figure out is that if today your monthly expenses are let's say uh, 25000 rupees a month how much will this expense become 5 years later because of inflation right so let's say if if your cash flow need today is 25000 hypothetically assuming inflation is growing at an x rate your cash flow requirement might become 50000 after 5 years when you are looking at attaining financial freedom so you typically want to build your portfolio in a way that if through the portfolio if cash flows are generated in a way where you are able to generate 50000 rupees a month largely right then your expenses are taken care of and the remaining amount of money can then move into probably assets that might not be slightly more volatile but may add that growth aspects to the portfolio so let's say if we are talking about the same example that i am talking to you of let's say if your requirement is 50000 rupees a month and if i consider today's uh, uh, today's interest rate let's say at 6% then whatever amount of money that i have to accumulate i know for a fact that 1 crore has to be kept kept aside in a fixed interest bearing instrument so that i can get i can get 6 lakhs a year uh, as cash flows so if you put 1 lakh rupee at 6% you will largely be able to generate 50000 a month or probably 6 lakhs a year that you are looking at and if your portfolio has accumulation beyond this 1 crore which has gone to fixed income that is when you allocate uh, the remaining amount of money to probably a little bit of equity a little bit of real estate depending on the way you would really want to structure but the first thing that you would want to do is assure that your living expenses uh, including that of inflation is taken care of after which you will allocate the remaining part of the money somewhere else but typically what you should also keep in mind in my opinion samira is that why you are trying to do this and let's say if you are somebody who is who is probably looking at early retirement or early financial freedom it might so happen that uh, you know you've not been able to take care of all of your goals right so there may there may be some goals uh, pertaining to child's education or child's marriage or something else that is still something that you've not been able to take care of but you are trying to attain a cash flow kind of a portfolio so what you should ideally also do is that once you've secured this this cash flow requirement of yours by putting money in fixed income before putting money in some other assets to do with equity or real estate you will try and first figure out that you would want to keep your money in a way that the given goal uh, that you are looking at attaining is also taken care of so first you take care of your cash flows then you take care of your goals and if at all there is some money left is where you will look at parking that into uh, various other assets to try and try and build a portfolio for yourself okay kiran just one final question you know we are coming out of two years of a pandemic uh, you know it's still a time of uncertainty because we're talking about uh, maybe uh, you know recession there's inflation all around us uh, should ev- any kind of investor currently be more focused on cash flow over net worth so sumera to answer this question uh, very uh, uh, tactically for this particular point the answer is a yes you would typically see that value style of investing or the investing where we are talking about where cash flow generation is is of importance uh, this is the kind of style that typically works in expensive market valuations or uh, markets where you will see a slightly recessionary kind of a situation or inflationary kind of a situation so if you look at historical data points you will always relate to this fact that whenever markets have been expensive or whenever uh, you know you've not really had confidence on the valuations uh, of the equities you would typically see value style of investing has definitely performed more over growth style of investing right where if you've received cash flows those cash flows can easily be redeployed uh, at a given opportunity because you are in a situation where you will you will keep getting opportunities because of inflation numbers probably not coming out in the direction that you want or or the recessionary pressure or the inflationary pressure that we are talking about so yes going by the historical data points you will typically see that value style of investing always works in in such a situation where you are not very happy 
with the kind of valuations that equity markets trade at right so Understood. definitely if you look at the current situation and uh, we are talking about how can new money be allocated probably if we are expecting inflation not to come down recession uh, to be buoyant i think value style of investing will definitely do much better than growth style of investing and the cash flows that you will make out of value style of investing may be redeployed at a much better opportunity versus doing a growth Understood. style of investing scenario kirtan thank you very much for joining in to explain this and to talk to our viewers about it with that we're going to wind up on this edition of money 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 do stay tuned and of course we'll see you again next week thanks for watching